seven thirty. Hang on one. Yeah. Hang on one second, Mayor. Okay. Hey everyone, join us in salute to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to Section 5, Chapter 231, Public Laws, 1975, this is to state for the record that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the public by posting and maintaining the annual notice of regular meetings on the bulletin board of the municipal building, by mailing the annual notice of regular meetings for 2018 to the news record and star ledger in December 2017, and by filing said notice in the office of the township clerk. Ms. Adams? Here. Mr. Daffis? Here. Mr. Lembrick? Here. Good night, CC. Mr. McGee? Here. Mayor DeLuca? Here. Good night, Liz. <laughs> We're at Chapter 231 of the Public Laws, 1975, commonly known as the Open Public Meetings Act, requires that all meetings of the public bodies be open to the public. And whereas Section 7A provides that the governing body has the discretion to prohib permit, prohibit, or regulate the activity, excuse me, the participation of the public at any meeting, and where it is, it is the desire of the governing body to comply with the provisions of this act, and at the same time to conduct its business in an orderly and expeditious manner. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Maplewood that it does hereby prohibit, except as set forth in the formal agenda, active participation in the deliberations of the governing body by the public, and except as otherwise prescribed by law does limit the public to observations of the actions and discussions of the governing body at all of its regular and special meetings. So moved. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Township Committee meeting of May 1st, 2018. Uh, we have um, a lot of fun things to do in the very beginning of the meeting, and we're going to get right to them. Just want to go over the agenda. First, though, I want to uh, let you know that Liz Fritzen, our township clerk, is uh, uh, on the mend and will not be here tonight. And we have a rookie, uh, a fill-in. Uh, we're going to ask you to speak up. Yeah, because you don't speak up. Yes, loud. Mayor. All right, very good. <laughs> and all of you be patient with our township attorney who's filling in as the uh, township clerk tonight. A much more difficult. <laughs> uh, our first order of business will be the accreditation of the Maplewood Police Department by the New Jersey Chiefs of Police Association. And next we have the honor of a resolution 9718 appointing Sergeant Kunzel to a lieutenant in our police department. We'll be doing that. We'll be administering the oath of office. Uh, we then have two appointments to our boards and committees, uh, one to the Zoning Board of Adjustment and the other to the Local Assistance Board. After that, we have a Board of Health meeting. Uh, and then right after that, we have an appointment of our new business administrator, uh, Sonia Viveros, who is uh, effective January, June 1st, not January, June 1st, 2018. Then we'll have a public comment session, and then we'll do ordinances on final. We have one on uh, doing some changes to our sustainability committee. Another is creating a fund for uh, donating trees to Memorial Park. Third, final ordinance is um, establishing employment positions within the township and also salary ranges. Then we'll be introducing two new ordinances, one on uh, dealing with streets and sidewalks, and the other is um, dealing with certificate of occupancy guarantees uh, when there's work to be done. We have five discussion items. The first is a, a discussion about single-use plastic bags. Second is uh, authorization to go out to for the administrator, township administrator's uh, position. Uh, we'll be talking about a, a receipt of a proposal for the study of the area in need of rehabilitation for 104 Baker Street. We'll be talking about changes to the police department's table of organization. And lastly, we'll be uh, talking about the 2018 sewer fee. Consent agenda, we have... Um, Eight items. Uh, first is um, dealing with compensation for non-contractual officials. Second is approving the Safe and Secure Communities Program, the grant program. 
Three is awarding uh, construction of speed humps on Rutgers Street. Uh, four is bills and claims. Five is an agreement with the YMCA to lease the Civic House. Six is a shared service agreement for tax uh, collection services uh, with the Township of South Orange. 7103-18, which I'm going to ask to be voted on separately, is awarding a contract for the pool concession. And 8 is approving the minutes of April 17th. We'll have our second public comment period. We'll have reports from departments, reports from elected officials, and then we will adjourn. This evening, after we finish our public meeting, the Township Committee will adjourn into closed session. We'll be interviewing for Chief Municipal Finance Officer. So we'll be here for a while, but we're going to move forward with uh, the first order of business. And Chief, do you want to come up and set the stage for uh, what we're about to see with the accreditation of the Maplewood Police Department? You can turn that around if you want to talk to the group. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. Good evening. Committee members. <clears throat> First, I'd like to welcome everybody here, and I appreciate you being here. Um, in a moment, I'm going to introduce Chief Harry Delgado from the New Jersey State uh, Chiefs of Police Association. Maple Police Department uh, has started the accreditation program several years ago. Uh, it's a very important program, establishes the standards for police officers in this state. Uh, Chief Delgado will speak more about that. When I became acting chief in, uh, in August, it was very important for me to recognize the importance, particularly at this time, of the accreditation program and the standards within that to make sure that the public understood that the Township Police Department was going to be following the policies that we set forth. Um, so I made it, I made it one of my largest goals during that period to have uh, a team put together to make sure that we would be reaccredited. So, Chief Delgado. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mayor, Council. If you indulge me for a couple of minutes, I'd like to share with you the significance of the achievement by Chief Duvall and his accreditation manager, uh, Lieutenant DiMaggio, as well as his staff. Um, it is, it, as someone else would say, is huge. And I say that because out of potentially 550, perhaps 560 law enforcement agencies in the state of New Jersey that would be eligible to apply for accreditation, to date, just about 200 have been able to make it. And that is because the process is so rigorous. So you figure that those that have made it once initially, which is a, a two year process that leads to a three year reaccreditation examination, it's about 39%. And those that have done it twice, meaning another three years and achieved the reaccreditation, about eight percent. Those that have achieved what Chief DeVol and Lieutenant DiMaggio have actually accomplished for this uh, municipality fall in less than one percent of the law enforcement agencies in the state of New Jersey. To be able to do it, maintain it for that length period of time, particularly in light of so I had a lot of communication with the chief and the lieutenant uh, to have the, la the latest phase of this program. It is truly remarkable. So I'd like to share with you what it means for the community uh, and for everyone involved. So accreditation is a process, and the foundation of accreditation lies in the adoption of standards containing a clear statement of professional objectives. As the chief was indicating before, it's a sample of best practice, not just state best practices, but national best practices. Accreditation is a progressive and time-proven way of helping law enforcement agencies calculate and improve their overall performances. It is a certification by an independent authority, in this case, the New Jersey State Association of Chiefs of Police, that the accredited agency was carefully measured against an established set of state and national standards and has met, and in the case of the Maplewood Police Department, in many instances, exceeded accepted, uh, accepted practices in the field of law enforcement. I know that the, you know, the taxpayer wants to know what's in it for me, and so the research shows that accredited agencies have 11% fewer police professional liability claims 11% fewer worker compensation claims and 31% fewer auto liability claims. More of the municipalities that participate in the male affiliated joint insurance fund stand to receive some premium discounts uh, as applicable. But in addition to the fiscal advantages, there are other very important benefits to accreditation. So accredited agencies are better able to defend against lawsuits and citizen complaints. 
Accreditation provides objective evidence of an agency's commitment to excellence in leadership, resource management, and service delivery. Government officials can be more confident in the agency's ability to operate efficiently amid community need. And accreditation, and I've had many conversations with the chief about this subject, embodies the precepts of community-oriented policing. It creates a form in which police and citizens work together to prevent and control challenges confronting law enforcement and provide a clear direction about community expectations. Accreditation standards give the chief a proven management system or written directives, sound training, clearly defined lines of authority, and routine reports that support decision making and resource allocation. And finally, officers of accredited agencies, as I see many here tonight, one that stands to get promoted, are able to take pride that they have been objectively recognized for their professionalism and adherence to the high standards. I like simply to add, in terms of personalizing this process, which is very rigorous, some of the communication that actually the chief and his staff had with the assessors that came here at the end of the process, the three-year process. And we began to talk certainly uh, months before that, that date was actually scheduled. Um, there is a two-day visit, on-site visit. And not only does this raise the level of stress of anyone involved, but it also makes sure that the police department can show tangible proof of every standard required in the standard of Jersey, and in this case, it's 105 of them. And so I, I, I share with you from the report that was submitted by the assessors on site. The command staff exhibits a high level of commitment to improving public relations with all segments of the community. Chief Duvall has implemented several programs, the Christmas toy collection, coffee with a cop, to foster police public interactions. He has also attended forums with members of the public and plans to implement a youth net program in 2018. Officer Lance Messler, who was the ride along with one of our assessors, was an example of professionalism and competence and demonstrated knowledge of the agency, its jurisdiction, and the accreditation standards at the patrol field level of the agency. And that's very important because if the actual, if, if the uh, uh, field officer in the field does not uh, engage, uh, certainly uh, the, um, the, the system fails. The high level of competence, leadership, and professionalism is evident within the agency. Now, from my interaction with the chief and his staff, Chief DeVore was clearly committed to the process of accreditation, as he stated before. He kept his focus, left his staff, and allocated resources to overcome challenges and achieve the goal. Chief DeVore persisted and accomplished a significant amount of work during the final phase of this process. I can personally can attest to that. This is a remarkable achievement that places his agency in an elite group of law enforcement agencies, again I say, of less than 1%. It is the opinion of the assessment team that the Maplewood Police Department is a highly professional and committed agency, which exemplifies all of the tenets of law enforcement accreditation at the state and national level. And therefore, it is my honor to recognize on behalf of the New Jersey State Association of Chiefs of Police and the New Jersey Law Enforcement Commission and congratulate Chief Jimmy DeBall, Accreditation Manager, Lieutenant Thomas DiMaggio, the members of the Maplewood Police Department, the Mayor and Council, and those citizens that they so proudly serve for achieving state reaccreditation for a second time, joining a very exclusive group of law enforcement agencies that have made this commitment to excellence in police. And so congratulations to all. Chief, do you want to say anything? I don't know if you're ever going to give that up. You might be holding that. <laughs> you might be sleeping with that today. Um, Mayor, I just want to thank the, the members of my department. Uh, it took my staff and, and the accreditation staff 
to get the officers to recognize the importance of this. And when I explained, as Chief Delgado mentioned, how many departments really can say successfully that they accomplished this, uh, I knew that was something that we had to do. And I want to thank the, my uh, accreditation team and the officers, as well as the Chiefs of Police Association. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Chief. Hey, Mr. Desiderio, we have Resolution 9718. Yes, Mayor. Resolution 97-18, a resolution appointing Sergeant Peter Albert Kunzel to Lieutenant of the Maplewood Police Department. Whereas the position of Lieutenant in the Maplewood Police Department, excuse me, in the Police Department of the Township of Maplewood has become vacant, and whereas the Township Committee of the Township of Maplewood has conducted interviews to fill the position of Lieutenant in the Police Department, and whereas it has been determined that Sergeant Peter Al Albert Kunzel is qualified for this position. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Maplewood County of Essex, State of New Jersey, that Sergeant Peter Albert Kunzel being is hereby appointed to the position of Lieutenant in the Maplewood Police Department in the Township of Maplewood, effective May 1st, 2018. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, move the appointment of Sergeant Kunzel to Lieutenant of the Maplewood Police Department. I'll second that. Ms. Cornwall? Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes. Just want to say, uh, Mayor DeLuca and the Vice Mayor Adams, Council Member El Bambrek, uh, McGahey, Daffis, uh, thank you very much for making this uh, take place. Uh, you won't be disappointed in my service. Uh, to Chief Duvall and Captain Sally and all my colleagues, thank you very much for coming out and supporting me in this. And of course, where I'd be without the love and support of my family. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, uh, so we can take a little bit of a break if you wanted to go uh, leave and go party. <laughs> or you can stay for the entire... <laughs> yes. <laughs> sure, sure. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Well, you know, Let me go around here. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. 
Chief is asking with regard to the table of organization, do you want him to stay or, or not? I, I, think, I think it would be helpful if he can. Okay. We can move it up. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll move it up, up until right after the ordinances. Oh, we can do it before. We'll see okay. if anybody's here. Um, okay, so we're now going to move into our appointments uh, to boards and committees. Uh, I'd like to present Morgan McRae. You can come on up to the mic. And Ms. McRae is going to be appointed to the Zoning Board of Adjustment. So if you could just tell us hello and who you are and... Uh... Uh, well, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, committee, for having me. It's good evening. Um, my name is Morgan McRae, and um, my family and I are... Brand one new... second. We need to have... Sorry. Yeah. The chief has got to go admonish his uh, workers. <laughs> Party started here. Yeah, it's like an echo chamber out there, so the older out there start <laughs> talking to get here. Okay, you're good. Sure. So, uh, again, my name is Morgan McRae, um, and my family and I are brand new to Maplewood. Uh, we moved here uh, just before Labor Day. Um, and I think probably like many of you who uh, moved to Maplewood uh, were drawn, I think, to the richness, richness of the community and, and the many offerings here. And I think um, since I've been here, and even before I got here, I um, had an interest in just knowing how um, such a suburban town um, could sustain, I think, such a beautiful place. And so um, kind of wanting to not only benefit from that, but also to contribute to that, um, I sought out opportunities and, and found um, uh, this committee, um, which happens um, to um, fit very well, I think, with my professional um, background, which is in compliance and operations. Um, and so I, I thank you um, for the opportunity um, to be nominated for the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Great. Terrific. So um, Ms. McCray, filled out one of the volunteer forms and that's how your name surfaced. So for those of you out there who are interested in volunteering, that's the best way is we, we get these and we take a look and when there's an opening, we reach out. So I was able to reach out to you and it worked out. So with that, I'd like to uh, move the nomination of Morgan McRae to the Zoning Board of Adjustment. I'll second. second. Ms. Cordero? Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lambert? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca. Yes, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And your first, your first meeting is Monday night, so. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up we have an appointment to the Local Assistance Board and Mr. Rudy Walker. Come on up here. Now, um, your name was recommended to us by our welfare. Ms. Ashmon yeah, and Ashmon. also Ms. Uh, Bartlett. Yes, okay. Tony Bartlett, she was here previously. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm old friends of Ms. Bartlett. I'm, not, I'm currently a resident of Maplewood. Prior to that, I was a resident of South Orange for five years. Prior to that, I was a resident of Orange. But my house burned down. Uh. So I ended up in South Orange, so from there, I'm here in Maplewood now for two years. So they thought I'd be uh, an asset to the board. So here I am. Hey, great. Um, Mr. Deffis, do you want to uh, move this nomination? Yes, Mayor, I'd like, I'd move Mr. Walker to uh, be appointed to the local assistance board. Second. Who's called the roll? Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We're done. <laughs> and as promised, we're going to get you out of here before 8 o'clock. Uh, next up, we're going to move to our Board of Health meeting. Yep. All right. Pursuant to Section 5, Chapter 231, Public Laws, 
1975, this is the state for the record, the adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the public by posting and maintaining the annual notice of regular meetings on the bulletin board of the municipal building, by mailing the annual notice of regular meetings for 2018 to the news record and star ledger in December 2017, and by filing said notice in the office of the township clerk. Ms. Adams? Here. Mr. Daffis? Here. Mr. Lembrick? Here. Mayor Galuka? Here. Mr. McGeehee? Here. Whereas Chapter 231 of the Public, public Laws 1975, commonly known as the Open Public Meetings Act, requires that all meetings of public bodies be open to the public, and whereas Section 7A provides that the Board of Health has the discretion to permit, prohibit, or regulate the acti active participation of the public at any meeting, and whereas it is the desire of the Maplewood Board of Health to comply with the provisions of this Act and at the same time to conduct its business in an orderly and expeditious manner. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Maplewood Board of Health uh, that it does hereby accept as prohibited in the formal agenda active participation in the deliberations of the Board of Health by the public and accept as otherwise prescribed by law does limit the public to a, the observation of actions and discussions of the Board of Health at all of its regular and special meetings. So moved. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. All right, I will now entertain a uh, motion to approve the minutes from April 3rd, 2018. President McGeehee, I would like to uh, move to approve the minutes of our April meeting. Get a second? Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Mr. Rowe, you have the floor, sir. Okay, I uh, report on a couple of re activities this past month. Um, the river cleanup we had April 21st was one of the most successful we've had in years. I particularly want to thank Columbia High School students. Uh, they came out in, I don't know, large numbers and cleaned up the whole area on West Parker, going up the river up to South Orange. And it was a big mess before, looks so much better now. and. Uh, so I'm hoping we can continue to keep it clean and we'll, we'll be back uh, next year, if not sooner. Uh, drug take back day at the police department. Uh, as I understand, there were 94 pounds of drugs uh, turned in. So thank you for the police department for sponsoring that. And uh, that may take some dangerous uh, opioid drugs off the uh, out of people's medicine cabinets that they no longer need. Uh, coming up this month, on May 24th, uh, at the fire department from 9 to 1, we're having a special stroke risk assessment day uh, with the aid of St. Barnabas. And we're doing it at the fire department because we want first responders to uh, take this screening test. But it's also open for police officers and also open for anyone from the public. So we'll be starting signups for that soon. And um, so stroke is a killer and it's something you need to pay attention to. Uh, and finally, tomorrow is Get Fit, Don't Sit Day. And uh, I know myself, I sit behind the desk way too much. So, so I'm hoping to do less desk sitting tomorrow. And uh, thanks to- a standing our, desk. Yes. Uh, maybe Not hard. And, uh, I'm hoping we all, we have, most of us need more exercise. So uh, this is a way to encourage it. That's my report. Thank you, Mr. Webb. Two questions for you. One, uh, you mentioned uh, some interest in hookah bars in town. Yes. I'd like to explain a little more about what's going on with that. Well, place. right now I have one business person who's been contacting me wanting to open a hookah bar. And uh, my understanding of the Indoor Clean Air Act is that would be prohibited. But he's contesting that uh, binding. So I've uh, actually I emailed our township attorney today uh, to double check on the laws because I don't want to tell the man the wrong thing. I, I'm just pretty sure it's prohibited, but I'm not 100% positive. Prohibited in a residential building. Right? Prohibited anywhere in the state of New Jersey. Oh, that can't be true. No. Okay. Okay. I, we'll, I, we'll, we'll have except we'll, for we'll, casinos. We'll, we'll, I just yeah. got Mr. Rowe's uh, email this afternoon. We'll do the research and we'll get a okay. response to everybody. Okay. Okay. But, okay. Thank you, Mr. Desiderio. 
My next question for you, Mr. Rowe, is regarding the Essex Regional Health Commission uh, when they did the idling report uh, over by Kings. Yes. Uh, I saw no findings. Is there any uh, follow-up to that? Uh, the inspector went there twice, did not find any idling violations or noise violations. Uh, he's offered to go to the one complaining resident's apartment at 5.30 in the morning if needed to take measurements. Um, one of the things is taking noise measurements according to the state DEP code is not like using a radar gun. It's uh, you have to do certain the A scale on the decibel scale. You have to get background noise. Uh, the noise meter just doesn't measure noise from one source. I can't just point and say it, Mr. Daffis, and see how much noise he's making. It measures all the noise in the room. And if there's airplanes going over or trains going by, that's all shows up on the noise meter. So it's something, it sounds easy, but it's actually a little more complicated, much more complicated than it seems at first. But we're willing to, to actually go to the person's home and take the measurements because that's legally, that's where the measurements would need to be taken and not out in the street. Uh, I also had, um, information from Essex Regional Health Commission that since the trucks are parked in the street, they may be um, not subject to some of the noise regulations. If they were parked, say if Kings had a parking lot and they were parked in the parking lot, that would be affected. Such as we had on Camptown Road uh, about 15 years ago. That was because it was on the Camptown Road uh, business property. So it's one of those things that's a little more complicated. I think I think we're not going to find that it, they're actually not in violation, but so the decision would be, does the committee decide they want to provide relief beyond 6 a.m.? And uh, that's the decision I can't make. So let me make sure I'm clear. So you're saying if the truck is parked on the street, then you're saying that it may not be in violation? Yes. And if they would be, if they were idling for a lengthy period of time, it could be a violation. But they're not idling for Vilink. They actually, they all turn their engines off. But some of the trucks are refrigerator trucks so that they can have their refrigeration units running because, you know, you, want, you don't want the product to spoil. So um, I think that's some of the noise that the person heard was not the truck engine, but the refrigeration engine. Well, the, other, the thing is we are, we are allowing them to pull up there to a delivery area. Yes. So. Uh, Thing about them being on a public street, it's uh, you know we've created a quasi loading zone there, and we can control that loading zone. Um, okay. I think the issue of the refrigeration units is the problem. So if you remember when we were standing at talk to the township committee, and that produce truck was there, the engine was off, but the refrigerator unit was going, and it was yeah. loud. Absolutely. So. What we ought to do is just take him up on his offer to go to the tenant house at 5 30 so we can contact him and see if he's willing to do that okay and i'll, I'll um make further checks on the, the whole quasi lo loading zone uh concept i haven't hadn't even considered that before yeah. well, all we have to do is just tell them no trucks can, we can pass an ordinance saying no yeah. trucks until 7 a.m right. right but that's going to affect the king so uh, you know i understand that the, the the trucks are getting there early and parking and waiting for kings to open but it's still causing a problem because even in the report, they had to start the engine to lower the gate. They had to start the engine to do something right. else. Um, but you know, let's let's we can also go back to uh, Marianne Kleismont, uh, who's the area director, and have a sit down with her and review it too. Yeah, because okay. it doesn't seem to make sense that we're allowing early morning deliveries to a store that's not open to accept them yet. So right, yeah, they're arriving. <laughs> half an hour before they can yeah, make a well, delivery. Yeah. Right. Right. And they're parking, they're running their refrigeration units. Right. Right. And then they get out and they talk, they go to Starbucks. Right. And it's creating activity yeah. there that we really are not looking right. to it, But just, there are other businesses that start deliveries early in the morning too. Maybe not quite as early as King's, right. but- They're also not usually- Fish market delivers early. But they're not like 18 wheelers. You're not no, bringing a big it's just truck. a van. That's a van. And that's backed in so the noise is going directly into their store. 
a little different. So, Mr. Rowe, why don't you reach out to that resident and set up that meeting so we can talk about it next month? Okay. Perfect. We'll keep working on it till we. Thank it you. Out. Uh, does anyone else want to address uh, Mr. Rowe? All right. I'd now like to invite the public to address uh, the health department. Seeing no one, I will entertain a uh, motion for adjournment. May uh, get, I get one? Please. I move we adjourn. Second. So moved. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Thank you. Okay, hey, item number 10. Thank you, sir. Item number 10, we're back to the main agenda. And we're very happy to be putting forth resolution 98 18. Resolution appointing Sonia Alves Vivieros as Township Business Administrator. Whereas on June 1st, 2018, the position of business administrator for the Township of Maplewood become vacant. And whereas the Maplewood Township Committee undertook a process to interview candidates for the position of Township Business Administrator. And whereas through the course of the interview process, Sonia Alves Viviero showed her commitment to Maplewood, her knowledge of municipal management practice and her plans to optimize the delivery of services to Maplewood residents. Now therefore be it resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Maplewood, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, that effective June 1, 2018, Sonia Alves Vivieros B, and hereby appointed business administrator of the Township of Maplewood. I'll move it. Second. Ms. A Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, Mayor and the Township Committee, I'd like to thank you for um, believing me in this entire process. It wasn't uh, easy, so I don't want anybody to think that it just kind of, you know, fell on there. It certainly didn't, and um, I don't want it to be that way either. Um, I want to just let this community know that um, I, I've, uh, you know, fell in love with it. Um, the employees are great to work with, and I just want to continue doing um, the best job I can. Um, and serving as a certainly serving as a public servant is my number one priority. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, next up we have our public comments. This will be the first public comment session. Is there anyone who wants to address the township committee? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Audrey Rowe. I'm at 32 Ingram Street in Maplewood. And I hope that I'm on target with this particular topic being discussed, but I wanted to come and make comment regarding the use of banners uh, in Maplewood. Uh, and I'm at the right place at the right time? Yep. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you know, I'm the program director for the Community Coalition on Race, and I wanted to bring a couple of things to your attention. Uh, first of all, we have found, and I'm sure it's not just the coalition, it's the same for other organizations in this community, that banners tend to be, if not the most, the second most uh, highest recognized and acknowledged way that people in our community find out about our events. Uh, we have lots of flyers, we do lawn signs, you know it, we try it. But when we ask people on our evaluations how they hear about our events, more often than not, they'll say through the banners. And for that reason, I wanted to come forward and have our voice be heard as you consider uh, what needs to be done in that area. Uh, secondly, I think that uh, while social media has taken over a lot of communication, we still have a number of residents, particularly our seniors, who aren't on social media. So having something that's visible that can remind them of what's going on, when and where, is very important. Moving it away from our own self-interest to uh, the community, I think that um, this investment is one of uh, investment in, with the community for engagement. We want people to be involved and be aware of what's going on, and this has proven to be a very highly effective way of doing that. And last but not le least, this is a very important and effective PR 
for our community. Uh, we become known and are known as a vibrant and progressive community. I can't tell you the number of times I've gotten phone calls or emails from people driving through who see the banners, see our website or our phone number, and call to find out more about what we're going on, uh, what's going on. So as a community that is uh, not only aspiring to, but it definitely is progressive, I think we need to think about not just short term and budget, but what are the implications and impacts for these kinds of decisions long term uh, and on the larger community. Uh, I understand some of the situations that have required us to come to this point to stop and consider what we're doing and why we're doing it and how. I would suggest rather than uh, taking a short term immediate action or actually reaction that we evaluate the situation to understand what the options might be. How can we stay in communication with the community, both our residents as well as our neighbors effectively? Where would we put this community, this uh, communication, and how would it be delivered? It might be a digital sign on the lawn. It may not be posts with uh, banners across our, our thoroughfare. So I uh, ask that rather than take uh, an immediate action that you give this some serious consideration. Thank you for your Thank time. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to address the Township Committee? Good evening, Jeanette Page Hawkins, Essex County uh, Representative, and I come before you this evening to see if the uh, Township Committee has any needs that the uh, county can assist with. To be totally honest, we're very frustrated about the Irvington Avenue project. I know you went back and checked with the engineer and there was an issue of rights away and all that, but it's really holding up our vision to make a difference on the eastern border of our community at Irvington Avenue in that shopping area. We've had residents that we've spoken to over the years and they've read about these plans and they're asking us what's going on and it's it's a little disappointing that the only thing we can say is, oh, we're waiting for the county. And I offered the engineer our assistance if we had to do some community meetings, whatever we have to do to get this moving. It's just very frustrating. Would you like to have a meeting at this time? or? I just want the project to start. I don't know if we need to have another meeting. We've met with him. I've spoken to him on the phone. How long ago was that? I saw him actually at the, uh, the last time I spoke to him about this was when um, Lieutenant Governor Oliver's room was being named after her. And mm -hmm. I mentioned this to him where we were either in a room or in an elevator together and said, we have to move on it. Okay. So that was within a month. All right. I, I will address it tomorrow. Thank you. Any other needs? I just wanted to say my, my daughter and I were at the zoo on Sunday and it looks great again this year and we're very excited for the uh, the penguins to come back and also for the new flamingos. Yes. Exciting, right? Now that you mentioned the zoo, what is the, I've been seeing some communication from, not from the county, but from uh, residents who are concerned about the proposed expansion of the zoo, of parking for the zoo and taking up open space in the, in the reservation. I'm and not aware of that, but I'll bring that to the us information on that. And, okay. um, because while the expansion of the zoo has been wonderful and all the improvements that have been done over there, there is concern valid not only just to the neighbors, uh, the West Orange neighbors of the of the zoo and the and the arena and the clunes and all that's gone on over there, but it does create it changes the environment there. So, but it also really lacking in forested and open space. So I personally am worried that we're going to be taking more to make this even more of a destination and pave over more space to make runoff with impervious surfaces and all that. And um, I know they had one meeting like a month ago with about 30 people that I didn't hear about until after it happened. So um, to express at least my concern about what they're going to do moving forward. And I think it's got to do with their master plan. So, yeah, we'd like more information on that because it affects us as well with runoff at the very least. Okay. 
Anything also, else? you know, if you're able to distribute to us, uh, you know, the dates for the upcoming events for the penguins and the flamingos. I'll drop that in the mail tomorrow for Thank you. you. Okay. I just want to go back to the issue that the mayor brought about the engineer. If you could actually CC us on that email communication that correspondence, I have my card. I'll give it to you now. I'd like to be part of that, that email thread. Actually, I would be verbally speaking to him in the morning. Well, if you want to send a follow up email, that'd be great. I so we can follow keep up. A video paper trail. Yes. Yeah, just email all of us. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. I can tell you that. We had you just take my card away. I know you have it. And then we, okay. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the Township Committee? Okay, we're going to close the uh, first public comment session. Uh, is there anyone who wants to speak on any of the, the two ordinances? Okay, if not, let's move so that the chief can get over with his, uh, <laughs> his colleagues. Um, let's move to uh, discussion item number four. Uh, changes to the Maplewood Police Department table of organization and corresponding budget appropriation. Mr. Lindbergh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is something that, that we've actually been discussing now uh, on and off for, for several months, including back during our budget hearings uh, at the beginning of the year. And uh, now that we have a little bit more clarity about uh, the future of the department, including the appointment of Chief Duvall as, uh, as chief, um, it's now the appropriate time as we try to finalize the budget to talk about what we'd like to do for uh, for these changes to the table of organization and uh, the chief's proposal which I will summarize and then uh, invite him up to either uh, correct clarify or expand uh, on what I'm going to say uh, is to create the position uh, of deputy chief uh, and uh, not by adding another officer uh, or even another superior officer to the department, but by creating a deputy chief in place of what's currently a lieutenant position. Uh, the deputy chief uh, would be a would be the liaison to the new community board. Uh, he or she would be in charge of uh, of the budget for the department. Uh, would take the lead on a number of operational matters. The, there would remain two captains uh, under the chief and the deputy chief. One would be the patrol captain who would be in charge of administration and also uh, overseeing the accreditation process that we saw the, the fruit of here tonight. Uh, and the other captain would be uh, taking the lead on professional standards uh, and training. So uh, this is something uh, that, as I said, you know, we've been talking about it for a while, and I'd like to uh, invite the chief up to uh, speak to us a little more uh, and also uh, explain to the public that's here or we're listening at home uh, the, uh, the advantages of this proposed change. Thank you, and good evening. Good evening. Good evening, chief. I've been saying all along that I want to make changes within the Maplewood Police Department. That is not exclusive to uh, anything at this point. I, I wanted to change the command structure, units within the department. I wanted to make it more efficient. This is the opportunity, I'm taking the opportunity to do this now. Uh, in my 29 years of service in the department, I've said to myself, if I was chief, what were the kind of changes that I would make? So I want to make these changes because I feel it will improve the operations of the department. I believe that it will provide clarity in the rank and command structure that I think that has been necessary for many, many years. I believe the creation of a, uh, a professional standards unit that coincides and coexists with a training unit is vital. I believe that these changes will benefit the township, the residents, and the officers. And I believe it's change that's necessary. Okay, thank you, Chief. Does anyone have uh, any questions for the Chief about this uh, proposed change? Yeah, can you um, 
explain how the deputy chief would be chosen? The deputy chief position will be chosen in a similar way as the chief of police department. So as, you would not be the chief, not be the one appointing? That's correct. Designate, designated by the township committee. And it would be the similar that anyone lieutenant and above would apply? Yes, the ordinance for chief does not specify. That would be my recommendation. And uh, roughly it's about a $20,000 increase yes. Yes. for the balance of the year. Right, and we're still in time we're to make our amendment to the budget, so uh, we would just quickly put that on and for the 15th. Okay, and, and Chief, just to clarify, um, this position uh, would be outside of the the SOA structures. So this, this would be outside of the of the PBA. They would have union protections, as I do, but I would not. Uh, the deputy chief and the chief would not negotiate. Would not use the union for negotiating purposes. Understood. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, uh, I, I don't have anything further to say, but, but I think what we need to do is. Uh, if you could make a motion to instruct Mr. Desideri to prepare an ordinance sure. to, to reflect this uh, new table of organization. Sure. Well, Chief, thank you very much for, for coming up with the proposal and, uh, and explaining it to us and being here tonight. And uh, I think we, we wish you well with the rest of the evening. Thank you uh, very much. Thank and, you, Chief. And Mr. Desideri, I would like to, uh, to make a motion uh, that is township attorney, uh, you prepare uh, an ordinance uh, to create this, uh, this amendment to the table of organization. I'll second that. So move, is there a second? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Please go to roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Duffus? Yes. Mr. Lumbrick? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go back to item number 12. We have an ordinance on final passage. Excuse me, Mayor, before, yes. I, before I start that, you, you want that on for introduction, for discussion? Introduction. For intro, gotcha. Yeah, for, for intro on the 15, and then uh, hopefully final on, it would be June 6th, because it's the Wednesday after election. Right. Thanks. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Uh, item number 12, Mayor? Yes. Ordinance on final passage, ordinance number 2903-18, an ordinance to amend chapter 62 of the code of the township of Maplewood entitled Sustainability Committee. This ordinance will change the name of the Sustainability Committee to Sustainable Maplewood and will make certain changes to its membership. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Is there anyone who wants to speak on this ordinance? Seeing no one will close the public hearing, can we get a motion, Mr. McGee? Sure. I move this ordinance be adopted as a whole and the clerk be directed to publish the same as the past ordinance in the Maplewood South Orange News Record according to law. Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Uh, Ms. Yeah, call the roll. I'm sorry, Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. We have our ordinance uh, number 13, final passage. Ordinance number 2904-18, an ordinance to create a fund for the donation of monies for the purchase of trees for Maplewood Memorial Park. This ordinance will permit donations to be made to the Maplewood Memorial Park Conser Conservancy for the purchase and installation of trees at Maplewood Memorial Park. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Um, regardless of the fact that there's no one in this room, <laughs> is there anyone who wants to speak on this ordinance? For those of you who may be watching at home, there's virtually no one left here. So, uh, But I have to ask if there's anyone of the non-people here who want to uh, speak on this ordinance, seeing none. Um, I'll do it. Mr. McGee. Here. Yes. I move this ordinance be adopted as a whole and the clerk be directed to publish the, the same as a past ordinance in the Midwest South Orange News Record according to law. Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Daffis. Yes. Mr. Lumbrick. Yes. Mr. McGee. Yes. Mayor DeLuca. Yes. Thank you. We have another ordinance on final. 
uh, ordinance number uh, 2905-18, an, an ordinance, excuse me, an amendment to ordinance 2862-17, authorizing classification of employment positions within the township and to establish salary <coughs> ranges for the employees. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Is there anyone who wants to speak on this ordinance? Seeing no one will close the hearing. I move this ordinance be adopted as a whole, and the clerk be directed to publish the same as the past ordinance in the Maplewood South Orange News Record according to law. Second. Who's called the roll? Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembert? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. We have an ordinance on introduction. Ordinance number 2906-18. An ordinance to amend chapter 239 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Streets and Sidewalks. This ordinance will add driveway aprons to the list of areas to be maintained by abutting property owners. Mayor, move the passage of this ordinance on first reading. It's publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record and a hearing to be held on May 15, 2018. Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. We have another ordinance on introduction. Ordinance number 2907-18, an ordinance to establish the requirement for performance and maintenance guarantees for developers within the Township of Maplewood and to establish a temporary certificate of occupancy guarantee within the Township of Maplewood. This ordinance will establish performance and maintenance guarantees for developers within the Township of Maplewood and will establish a temporary certificate of, oc of occupancy guarantee within the Township, within the township of Maplewood. Mr. Daffis. Mayor, I move the passage of this ordinance on first reading. It's publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record and a hearing to be held on May 15th, 2018. Second. Let's call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. Uh, we have uh, discussion items. Uh, Mr. McGeehee, single-use plastic bags. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a uh, discussion I want to start because I think the time has come for us to really just start to look at the possibility of having uh, the end of single-use plastic bags in our community. Uh, this weekend, we're going to have an event in Maplewood and South Orange called the So Not Plastic Bag Weekend. We're asking merchants from all our business districts to participate. And instead of providing plastic bags, they'll be providing uh, paper bags, or in some cases, no bags at all. And you'll bring your bags into the particular merchants. Uh, the problem with plastic bags, single-use plastic bags, is they're bad for the environment on top of it. Uh, in terms of recyclability, they're, they're not, and people don't even recycle them as it is. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to start the conversation to really look at improving our environment and add efficiency. Um, I think the first step is obviously to have our merchants be involved, which they are now, and kind of see how that goes, and then raise awareness of our residents, and then go from there to eventually, hopefully, ending the use of plastic bags. Now, of course, when you talk about that, there's various uh, levels of the use of plastic bags and merchant sizes, the types of plastic bags. Also, if you don't bring a plastic bag, you know, will mer merchants have these plastic bags? And will we potentially have them be charged a nickel or something like that? There are approximately 70 towns right now in Massachusetts that already passed this ordinance and uh, seven or eight uh, in uh, New Jersey as well. So I open this up for discussion. The idea is to get this on the agenda and start the ball rolling. Hopefully we'll have a very successful event this weekend. And then as we head into the fall, we can really seriously visit this and actually make this an ordinance. Has this gone before Green Team or Environmental? The green team is involved in this. In fact, uh, they are also sponsoring uh, the Sona Plastic uh, Bag event this weekend. Oh, the Environmental Committee. And they're, and they're cognizant of it as well. Everyone's involved. So is Soma Action Climate as well. I actually uh, host a radio show on Sunday mornings and had uh, the Tracy Woods on the green team as well as the Soma Action Climate talk extensively about the program. Um, is there a reason that since bags are also not good for the environment that we're or actually like this coming weekend that was one of my problems with the event that encouraging paper bags is not necessarily an alternative that we really want to talk about bags and promoting reusable bags as well but yeah I, I, I won't no bags. yeah I mean I won't speak for the organization put together they put a lot of work into this I mean to get all these merchants to do it I think that could be another phase of it if you're interested in you know 
collaborating with me on that, we can move forward and add paper too. But I think plastic right now is probably the number one, you know, uh, misuse of uh, unrecyclable uh, material. Yeah, I would ask that also to be considered would be plastic straws. I mean, there's there's communities now finally. I, I get laughed at every time I ask for no straw in my water. It's become like a routine though for restaurants to just stick a straw into a glass that people know how to drink out of otherwise, <laughs> not a straw. Um, but straws, as opposed to plastic bags sometimes, but um, some plastic bags get uh, recycled. Um, it's more complicated, so people less likely for people to do it, but straws get dumped into the garbage, and that's why straws are sort of taking over in our oceans. Um, there's a movement right now in Seattle called Strawless in Seattle. They're passing an ordinance to ban plastic straws in the city. That's catchy. Um, yeah. And so I obviously am in favor um, of this as an environmentalist myself and to encourage. Um, so uh, uh, when I went to visit my son a couple years ago in Boulder, Colorado, um, I went to a drugstore and was um, asked if I wanted a bag and it would be a 10 cent surcharge on the bag. What's interesting about that is that it's also divvied up in the ordinance in Boulder that it's 60% um, of, the, of the fee gets uh, collected by the municipality and is designated for um, green initiatives or, or environmental or recycling or whatever, like the cost to us for recycling. So I'd like to see a component that put in there. The other 40% is uh, collected by the business. Um, and there are exceptions for uh, takeout food, for example, so that you don't have leaks and stuff because that's one of those um, areas where it's too difficult and too much of a burden on the, on the business to ship takeout food and have it being leaky and all that stuff. But overall, I'm in, I'm in favor of, of looking into something. Thank you, Mr. Adams. I think it's, uh, you know, again, it's the idea of understanding how businesses are impacted as you articulate it. You know, we have to look at um, the size of businesses, grocery stores versus merchants, small merchants, um, you know, the, the potential allocation of bags for those who don't bring bags in the five cents or ten cents you know working through that as well yeah. five cents better too um, any any other uh, comments i actually have a few comments mr mcgee thank you for bringing this starting the discussion um this is a public health issue and uh before we talk about the plastic bags themselves i think we need to do a better job overall of educating our residents about recycling and I know that's something that we talked about last year when I was uh, a member of the green team. And I hope that our green team and our environmental committee will move forward to begin certain education campaigns here in town, uh, better educating folks about how to recycle better and which materials are recyclable and which are not. The reason why so many communities around the country and around the world have singled out plastic bags uh, is not to promote paper bags, but because plastic bags, uh, the way that they're constructed, their chemistry makes them even less biodegradable upon recycling. They, they, so what happens is, at least based on the technology that we have right now uh, in recycling and the machines that are available, the bags break into many little parts. And with wind, and storms, they uh, make their way to the soil and they contaminate the soil They're make, and they make their way into the oceans where they uh, endanger biodiversity and eventually making our planet dirtier and endangering us. So this is a serious public health issue and I'm thankful that you brought it to our attention uh, and we should definitely start talking about how we can handle this in different steps perhaps begin uh, a charge as so many other, as you mentioned, so many other communities have done already in New Jersey and, um, and you know, figuring out for which merchants that makes sense, for which it does not. As you, as Ms. Adams said, restaurants would be excluded possibly uh, for food takeout. Uh, but this, I, I definitely applaud your efforts in this already and I support our uh, moving forward to, um, to address this. Thank you. Yeah, 
I'm just going to add, uh, I support this and support a more comprehensive approach to the whole waste yeah. uh, stream. You know, part of the deal is the we've separated the purchase of something from the disposal of the of those pro the packaging of those products, and so somehow we've we've socialized that as a problem. It becomes a garbage problem or a recycling problem when it's actually everything from when manufacturers figure out how they're going to package from the very source, have to think through the whole cycle of waste. Um, but I do think that we ought to move on this. I what I would suggest is um, we set a big goal. Of eliminating this and then do exactly as you say here are the steps that you know in the fourth quarter of 2018 we're going to address this and by mid 2019 we're going to address that we get everybody to grow and evolve together i think if we jam it on people we're going to get the negative response i would also want to make sure that we start having this conversation with the village alliance and the chamber of commerce and the springfield avenue partnership because um here's an article from the paper on belmar and the Belmar Business Partnership supported this. And I've heard other chambers of commerce in Point Pleasant Beach is supporting that. Now, many of those towns are supporting this because they're finding these plastic bags in their waterways, the ocean or the bay or the river. The so, beaches. yeah, so that so they're really feeling it. But I think if we can get make sure everybody's having this conversation, we understand what the overall goal is, and we implement it. So I think this is good, and. Um, I, I see that you've gotten some businesses signed on this weekend, so that's good, and we'll see how it goes. We'll get that that information from them. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Next up, we have the assistant township administrator job posting, Ms. Ms. Viveras. You sent it to us. Uh, I did, Mayor. But before I get to that item, I'd like to add um, a discussion item uh, for PTO donation. Um, we've okay. recently had. A well, how about you? How about you take that up in your report? You want me, my report? Yeah, come okay. back in your report. Okay. 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 Uh, so, Mayor, we, uh, with my position. Um, Moving, moving forward, uh, we'd have a vacancy in our department for the assistant township administrator position. I'd like to uh, obviously go out and put an ad for that to search for someone um, as, as soon as possible um, with the retirement of Mr. Manning at the end of the month and then uh, my beginning of June 1st. I said to everyone uh, what the ad would look like, just went over a couple different things, uh, clarified some of the duties and salary range, and so I just like your. One thing is, um, in the last paragraph, interested candidates should forward a letter of interest resume. We, no, we do not any longer ask for salary history. Okay. So cut, let's cut that out. You can ask for, I don't know, what, what do we call it? Compensation request? Or? Uh, the standard language is compensation expectations. Um, yeah. Let's put that so, in instead because, yeah. because we're trying to break the glass ceiling and not perpetuate lower salaries for women and people of color by doing that history. That's what I was going to Everybody ask. okay with this? We can yeah. authorize you. Otherwise, okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next up, 104 Baker Street. Uh, Ms. Harris, we got a, we asked Mr. Manning to um, go out and get a proposal from a consultant. Do you have that? I do. Uh, Mayor, I have um, a proposal from Phillips Price. Gregor Lightning Hughes LLC, and they would be doing the study um, for the uh, two, uh, Tumi's, previous Tumi's automotive repair shop, um, and it would call for, to qualify it as an area of need of rehabilitation. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that. Um, the estimated cost would be about between three and three thousand and thirty-five um, hundred. Um, which would be okay in terms of uh, pricing, and we would be good to go with your approval. Any discussion on this? Can we get a motion to move forward with this? So moved. Second. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Desdere, could you call the roll? Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lambert? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. So, uh, Ms. Veris, if you would contact Paul Grigo and let him know that we've approved this contract. So that and that he can get you the information that you need. Okay, so so that's a memorialization. Yes. Okay. Next up, we have um, 2018 sewer fee. Uh, just wanted to reinforce our decision last year 
last year the the fee was one hundred and eighty four dollars and we added a ten dollar surcharge in two thousand and seventeen to cover deferred capital costs um, and we just wanted to make sure that we were at a, back to one hundred and eighty four dollars this year so everybody's okay with that okay 100 yeah. percent. all right so uh if you could inform the cfo's office the finance office that we're the sort fee for 2018 is back to 184. 184 okay okay can we can we uh can we move that and i'll memorialize yes that let's uh, move the uh, somebody can make a motion the 2018 sort fee is 184 dollars so moved second ms adams Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. If we get a consent agenda on all the items except item number seven, resolution 103.18. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. Uh, the reason I asked uh, 103.18 to be voted on separately is I am uh, concerned about the recommendation. Um, we received three proposals. Uh, these are payments to us. The RS Food proposed payment was 25,000. CTX proposed 23.5. And Freeman's Fish Market, 16,001. Dollar. Um, there was a review process on technical management and cost, and uh, Freeman's came out ahead. And I'm just concerned that we're taking a nine thousand dollar hit on the payment to the town. You'd get sixteen thousand as opposed to twenty five thousand. Okay, Mr. Mayor, can I address? Yes. That? Yes. Um, so. Uh, you know, I'll start off by saying that, that Freeman's bid of the three was not the highest uh, in terms of dollars, but it was the best according to the criteria, the three areas that we decided upon. Uh, our recreation director, Ms. Mancuso, our deputy administrator, uh, Ms. Viveros, and I uh, were part of the committee that reviewed those applications and evaluated the criteria. Freeman's ended up uh, number one uh, on its own, on two ballots, and tied for number one on the third. Um, I think, uh, first of all, to address uh, the cost, we know that the pool has had a has had difficulty in recent years, uh, even keeping up its membership, much less driving new membership. Uh, I think that. Free bringing back Freemans uh, will be great for goodwill with our residents and our existing members. Uh, the number one complaint by far for the last couple of summers has been the concession. Uh, and the number one comment uh, every year in our member surveys after the end of the summer is to bring back Freemans. In fact, Ms. Mancuso and I went through uh, the last two years of those surveys today and we found at least 130 comments over the last two years um, from from members, uh, and that's out of and there weren't that many. There were maybe uh, two or three hundred total surveys that were turned back in. So, uh, on a very high percentage of those surveys, uh, we found uh, the members were complaining about the food vendor, and the majority of those specifically mentioned having a preference for Freemans. Um, I believe, and uh, the pool uh, advisory committee believes that having Freemans will drive new membership uh, and that uh, the new family memberships, it won't take that many more family memberships or, or our largest membership group. Uh, and it won't take that many more new family memberships uh, to make up the gap between Freemans and the higher bidders. Uh, the pool advisory committee met last night uh, and unanimously uh, agreed with the, uh, the proposal to, uh, to make Freemans the vendor for this summer. Uh, even among those in the community who heard that Freemans was just bidding this year for the first time in years, there's already a buzz uh, and excitement based on that. 
uh, the pool advisory committee already has a publicity campaign that they're ready to roll out to promote this uh, starting tomorrow uh, on social media and elsewhere uh, encouraging people to sign up for the pool uh, plus you know while this didn't factor into the criteria I think another intangible is we get to support a great local business. Uh, Reggie, Sean, and their team have have deep roots here in our community. They've built a they have you know they've built a, a loyal customer base in town, uh, and this will help them to expand that uh, and also uh, have their loyal customers come out to the pool. And in, you know while there were some issues the last time that Freeman's was the vendor, uh, you know there's now new ownership, there's new management. And I think the fact that there is a brick and mortar establishment right here in the middle of the village, they're easily found and they'll be accountable uh, to the township. They, they want to do a good job. Uh, you know, their bid was, uh, was, you know, was yes, was lower uh, than the other two. But in terms of the quality of the food they're planning to offer, the quality of, of the proposal uh, that they're offering, uh, and then the great demand uh, among our members and in our community uh, for Freemans to return. Uh, I think that, that yes, this is a risk, but I think it's one that's, that's worth taking. Well, let's be, let's be clear about the risk. The risk is not a risk. The risk is they came in $9,000 under the top bidder. We're taking a haircut of $9,000. We're already committed this year in our budget that we've introduced of subsidizing the pool with general revenue dollars of eighty-eight thousand um, dollars. That's in our budget, general revenue, eighty-eight thousand dollars. Last year, we had budgeted one hundred and twenty thousand in miscellaneous income, including pool uh, pool concession fees. We brought in a hundred thousand. This year, we've budgeted a hundred thousand, and we're already taking nine thousand off of that because essentially we got 25,000 plus last year from the concession and now we're willing to take 16. Um, our whole position on local buying is we look local first and we try to do that, but we don't take a hit like this to support a local business if they can't be competitive. So I would urge us to reject this proposal uh, to give it to Freeman's and to go with what we need is the highest bidder that's going to bring more revenue into the pool. Uh, but I, I would say, Mr. Mayor, in response to that, that a dozen and a half additional family memberships that are that come about as of uh, you know from the excitement over Freeman's uh, would cover that gap. Yeah, you don't know that. You just you know people are joining the pool because of the water and the pool, and, the, and I don't think anybody's going there for Freeman's. But that's just a difference of opinion. Yes, Mr. Davis. Um Okay, so we have a pool advisory committee whose job it was to evaluate the vendors. Is that correct, Mr. Lembrick? The, the, well, it, they, they did not do the evaluation. The evaluation committee was uh, the recreation director, Ms. Mancuso, it was uh, Ms. Viveros, and myself. Right, and that was based, and, and there were certain metrics, and that's what the points relate to. Is that right? right? Can you speak to what some of those parameters were? Uh, so you do, I mean, well, sorry, let me just explain what that what the what the competitive contracting process entails of in this case this is a request for proposals so it's not based on the lowest responsible uh, responsive bidder I understand that okay so um, and, and because this is a concession it's for specialized goods specialized goods and services uh, we received the proposals April 12th um, by while we give them 20 days to, to return it so we advertised got them on on the 12th we have a metric system uh, of, uh, of cost management and technical each of those three have different questions um, and criteria and that's how we base the the outcome of it. Um, there's a point system, and that's how more or less what it goes. So essentially, the purchasing agent is part of the committee. Then you have somebody who's on the uh, the advisory committee, and then you have the recreation director. So you can have as many members as you like. Uh, in this case, you want to keep it to a minimum because it, it could get a little, uh, you know. But it's not. It, it, it includes price, but it's not to, uh, just about the price. It's, it's about it's the quality in. of the, the work. We have the menu. Um, we have specifications that address quality of the food, 
uh, what type of food, um, acceptance of uh, credit cards was, was an issue, um, flexibility in terms of uh, serving breakfast was an issue. Uh, that was something that we changed this year. So uh, having a vendor there that's able to uh, to address those issues and be flexible in that sense was something that the recreation department was, was looking at. So those are just some of the things and I can certainly supply the specifications and what they entailed. Um, so it's, it's, it's an overall encompassing, not just price based, but uh, certainly there are different things. There, those are the things you want to consider. And Mr. Davis, the, the three areas were, uh, were of, the spec of the procedure were technical and that was worth 20 percent management that was worth 60 percent and cost was worth 20 percent got it and i understand that uh rs food express the highest bidder at twenty five thousand dollars has been the concession the concession that we've used the past three years in a row is that right to, to, I, I believe it's three, but it's at least the last two right and there have been reported from our members uh significant uh many complaints about their customer service their menu their difficulty in working with them uh their lack of flexibility uh and in some instances we've heard from members their outright rudeness is that right yes that would be fair to say based on both the anecdotal reports that have come into the department social media and then the formal member surveys that we do at the end of the summer so despite which I'm sure did not just happen last year uh, we've been using the same concession because they always are the most competitive in price is that right well and, and also sometimes we've gone out where the bid is, is a multi-year it is for a multi-year contract mm -hmm. so uh, but what we did for this year uh, to uh, to give ourselves more control over the process was was a we put together rather than just having it be the highest bid gets gets the contract we set up this criteria of technical management cost uh this evaluation process and uh and we're you know we're now able to take that into consideration and also we're awarding a a one-year contract just for the summer so this is not a multi-year uh a multi-year situation and the bids were confidential, so the vendors did not know what the others were doing. Right. We, we, we said the minimum bid, I believe, was 15000 15, Is that right? So we, we, we said the minimum bid would be 15000 And where uh, is that set by ordinance? How is that set? The minimum bid? No. no it was, just set, just, it was uh, just, just set in the specs. Sorry? That was just set in the specifications that were sent out. Okay. So it wasn't like something we no. decided. No. Right. I would recommend maybe we raise that minimum. Well, and, and, and that's something that we can yeah. consider for for next year. Uh, for this year, we set it at 15, uh, and the bids came in, and it went through the process. Anybody else? Well, I think if the um, minimum had been um, higher, we might not even be having this conversation as... Um, I agree with the mayor, but I also... Um, I'm willing to give Freeman's a chance to um, do a better job and to support local business, but I, I am worried about the, uh, the difference between the top and the bottom. However, um, because of the unhappiness of our residents who have been dealing with this last vendor, um, I'm not inclined to give it to that one either, and I'm more inclined to take um, take the hit this year and support uh, Freeman's for this contract but I would ask that for next year and when we go out for this proposal when we set out the RFP we raise the minimum so that we don't have this this isn't the issue whether it's a minimum we need to decide what the minimum should be and not just throw out a random number of 15,000 that's clearly lower than So four things. Uh, number one, I believe in our rec department. Uh, I believe in uh, the person who's the director. I believe in the committee who did the evaluation. I think they did the, put the time energy in to get this done. Number two, I believe in our residents. 
anyone that takes the time to fill out a survey and complain or, or provide information, help us to have a better experience should be also valued and also taken into consideration. Three, I believe in shopping local. I think that regardless of anything you do, you should always support your local business. We'll be doing that this weekend with the no plastic bag and other events as well. Uh, and number four, I think Mr. Lindbergh did a great job of doing a thorough evaluation. And sometimes I think, although I believe being fiscally responsible, sometimes you have to put money aside and look at the greater picture. So I'm going to support Freeman's. So let's move forward. Okay, call the roll. Well, let me, let me, if I may, this is a resolution awarding contract for the 2018 Maplewood Community Pool. No, I'm sorry, we need a motion. Yes, it is. Uh, you want to make yes. a motion? Yes. Is there a motion now? Yes. Yes. Okay, I, I'd like to move this. We need a second. I'll second. Okay, move and second and call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? No. A public comment. Anyone want to address the Township Committee? Seeing no one, we'll close the second public comment. Reports from departments. Ms. Viveros? Mayor, I have a few things. Uh, first, I'd like to start off. We have a situation where um, we have an employee who is um, unfortunately battling a medical situation, and uh, we've been approached by the um, FMBI uh, president and the association to donate um, some sick leave for this person. Um, we've uh, looked at an agreement, both our township attorney and the FMB, FMBA uh, attorney. Um, we're in agreement with the words, the terms. Um, the FMBA president and the employee have uh, executed this agreement, and we're just looking for your consideration and approval at this time. Um, it is time sensitive. This person is already undergoing um, treatment. So, treatment so. Ms. Vero, it's just a clarification question. So these are not days that will be donated by the township. These are days that other FMBA members would donate from their own allotment Correct. to this individual. Correct. And, and this raises the issue of um, instilling some sort of policy um, going forward. Obviously, um, it, it's something that we um, you know, we, we will face and we have faced, so instilling some sort of policy is going to be something we're working on. Yeah, I agree that we should we should institute a policy and we should we should get working on that, but I also don't think that this individual who is currently undergoing treatment should have to wait for, for us to do that. So I think, I think no. we should move forward with, with the agreement that's been negotiated. Second to that? I second. So this is an agreement to allow this uh, this, and, and under the terms of the agreement, this is a this is this is a one-time option. This is just for Correct. this particular individual, Correct. and it expires on uh, at the end of this year. Uh, the, the interestingly enough, Labor Council did look at this. Uh, Council for the FMBA kind of put a fine point on it, so that there would be uh, no question of F other FMBA members in terms of uh, they're getting their time back and the like. Uh, so I thought it was well thought through, and uh, I think the township's adequately protected. We have a motion and second. Let's just call the roll to allow this to go forward. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGeehee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. And I just have a couple of other things um, going on in our departments. Uh, DPW, the spring breakout ends on the 18th. Um, they're also planning on uh, planting 128 street trees um, throughout the township, and 100 of which have been planted already, uh, planted in-house by DPW. Um, Soma Two Towns, Go Go Parent has started today uh, for resident offering residents 65 and over subsidized rides in May and June. This is going to be a pilot program. Um, we're all looking forward to it. Um, and those are four rides per month at ten dollars. Okay. Right. Yes. Uh, yes. Engineering. Uh, our bond ordinance recently passed. Um, we're going through the um, twenty-day waiting period, but nonetheless, we're doing our due diligence by getting some quotes, some figures. Uh, so you have projects coming forth um, in the fall: um, Ridgewood Valley. Oakland, Prospect, Porter Road, Newark Way, Springfield, Evelyn Court, Durand, Baker, Elmwood Ave, Parker Ave. Um, in addition to, we have a new assistant uh, township engineer on board, and we're happy to have him. Um, cultural affairs, we have the uh, Django uh, going on this week. Um, their concert kicks off tomorrow. Was it uh, tomorrow? 
evening. Um, we have Mr. Manning's retirement party next Friday. May 11th. May 11th at the Woodland. Uh, tomorrow is uh, National Don't Sit, Get Fit Day. So if you are sitting for long periods of time, so we're encouraging employees to do that tomorrow. It's sit and don't stand. Actually, some of our departments um, have the uh, standalone uh, desks, our recreation. They're infamous for that, uh, which is a good thing. Um, we've seen it occurs with throughout the office offices. Um, Municipal Court, but they're actually going to have POMCA courses. They're hosting a few of them um, the next coming weeks, so that's a great thing for the court. Um, and they're actually adding a new deputy court, admi uh, court administrator uh, this coming week. Um, building, um, busy as ever. Um, uh, some of the projects might be slowing a little bit down, but nonetheless, uh, the renovations are, are happening. And uh, I think that, and then we, of course, recreation. We've got, we had swimming. Uh, we had a special on today for members. Uh, the lines were out, out to the hallway, which is a great thing. And we have senior trips coming up. So there's a lot happening in May. The weather's getting nice. So um, it's been busy. It's going to get busy. So thank you. Any questions for her? Okay, Mr. Desiderio. <laughs> Uh, I have no report, Mayor. And Mrs. Fritzen has no report. All right, good. <laughs> okay, reports from elected officials. Mr. Lindbergh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would just like to uh, offer my congratulations again uh, to, uh, to Sonia Viveros. Uh, Thank you. We look forward to, to having you to kick around for a while. <laughs> look forward uh, to it. And I also want to uh, wish Liz Fritzen a, a speedy recovery. Uh, and uh, that is my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. McGee. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a couple items. One, um, although I won't be joining us at the Django Go-Go uh, tomorrow evening, I will be at the uh, Family uh, Connections event. It's an annual gala. Family Connections is an organization that's a county that supports deserving families. They're having an annual gala in West Orange. Um, if you want to learn more about Family Connections, go to their website, familyconnections.org. Learn how you can donate. They take care of single women, battered women. Uh, they have a organiz They have a uh, facility uh, where kids come to learn to read. Uh, there's tutoring. It's a wonderful organization, and I ask all to support. Also, uh, this Sunday at the Loft, we're going to having a wonderful jazz event, uh, uh, which is going to have some some great blues and jazz people in the area. This is not technically sponsored by the CCR, but one of our dear founding members uh, organizes every year. Uh, I've been before, it's a wonderful event, and I just wanted to give her a shout out for that. Also, uh, even though it's a couple weeks, I want to get ready, get ready. it's spring. Biketopia is coming. The green team is sponsoring Biketopia on Saturday, May 19th from 12 to 2 in Maple Crest Park. I advise everyone to come out, get your bikes tuned up. Uh, learn a little about safe riding, maybe get a helmet from our police officers. Wonderful event. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we have the So Not Plastic Weekend. It's a wonderful event, an opportunity for people to come out, support local businesses, and also, you know, shop responsibly and also take care of our environment. We're also going to have a river cleanup on May 6, 2018, here, from 11 to 4 p.m. Uh, in South Orange. And finally, um, I want to recognize. Uh, Karen Whalen, who is going to receive the award, the Citizenship Award, uh, for the Affair of the Heart at the Maplewood Country Club uh, this Friday evening. Thank you. That's my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Ms. Adams. Yes, Mayor. Um, Ms. Rowe brought up the um, issue of the banner, hanging banners um, down to advertise events. This was discussed at our uh, Engineering Public Works meeting. Um, we were going to look over the um, regulations that we have in place for the existing over the street banners situation with the uh, banners hanging over Maplewood Avenue uh, is that they are coming loose it's been quite a wind tunnel down there they're attached to buildings and not freestanding poles the um, cost of, of 
installing freestanding poles and the limitations of the width of the sidewalk um, led the committee to uh, agree that that was not necessarily the best option. Uh, we talked about working in conjunction with the Maplewood Village Alliance to use uh, pole banners, that's traditionally what they're called, on the pedestrian scale lighting that it lines uh, Maplewood Village and streets and Maplewood Avenue and offering those up for local organizations to advertise their events. This is, um, the word got out prematurely um, about this discussion because discussion still has not been made with um, the Maplewood Village Alliance. So um, I would like input from this body before it goes to the Village Alliance and also um, as far as I remember, and Mayor correct, and Mr. McGee, he correct me if I'm wrong, this was not something that would apply to Springfield Avenue since we have freestanding poles you know, on Springfield Avenue for over the street banners. So again, there was some miscommunication um, that was released prematurely and uh, although this is a discussion we need to have. So um, I look for any questions or input from everyone else. Mr. McGee, is that your understanding as well? Yes, I'd like to actually follow up with Ms. Adams' statement that um, when we met as a committee, uh, the, uh, what we discussed was nothing to do with the type of banners or any of the other uh, conversations that's been circling through social media. It was very simply a safety uh, and noise issue. Uh, and nothing more than that. And I wanna make sure we're clear on that. Nothing more than that. Safety and noise issue. Uh, Ms. Adams is right, the information may have been disseminated a little too early in terms of scope, but some of the ideas in which she articulated were the solutions that we came up with when we thought we wanted to move forward with eliminating uh, uh, the banners. Uh, I was out uh, coming home off the train a couple weeks ago and witnessed that a banner that was extremely noisy, uh, extremely disruptive to just anyone in the village walking, let alone if you were a resident there, it was unsecure, and we've been very fortunate, frankly, that those cables have hold, held because if one of those snaps, we we're going to have a, a very unfortunate situation, possibly liability on our hands. So I think it should be uh, clear to our community, especially our organizations that we respect and honor so dearly, uh, that this is not anything along social, uh, you know, any any type of uh, you know discrepancies or anything like that. It's a safety issue. It's a noise issue. This was brought up not by any other organization, but by our committee and no one else. And I just want to clear the air on that. Mr. McGee, thank you for clarifying that. I think it's important to uh, have the public hear that. Um, the directive that went out officially um, stated uh, a total ban on Maplewood Avenue as well as on Springfield Avenue, as you're aware. So uh, in light of this discussion, I think we need to um, redirect that directive, send out a new directive, uh, and make it very clear that uh, this is based on public safety. Uh, and until we find an alternate method, um, we, you know, this is what we got to do. I mean, those banners are not even effective in terms of marketing on Maplewood Avenue because they're constantly twisting in the wind. Uh, and as you said very uh, eloquently, it's only a matter of time before one of those things comes loose and hits uh, a pedestrian and we have a serious problem on our hands, so. So the situation is that anyone who had a reservation for a banner through May in Maplewood Village will continue to have a banner in Maplewood Village. We're not taking any reservations beyond May, the end of May. And that's consistent with our discussion and going to the Village Alliance and talking about putting up the um, the other kind of banners on the poles, oh, right? Banners, right? And the reason that it was put out there is because we want to make sure that anybody anticipating putting something up June on did not spend money on any banners. Sure. So I believe there's two or three different groups that have reserved banner time, the banners will be up. Um, and I believe there's going to be a banner, um, some of the banners are going to go on the the basketball courts or the tennis courts. And the CCR has a banner across the street. The other thing is we were, you know, so the, somehow the banner started to migrate to the front lawn of Town Hall. That's not what we want. Because everyone started to ask, well, if this group put a banner up, 
we want to put a banner up. So with the village, my understanding is that we're going to honor the ones that we've already reserved. I think the Garden Club has it. There may be one or two others um, that's going to happen. And there's only one banner space left. There was three. We were told by one of the building owners, you can't put banners up anymore. We had another one break. And then there's the last one up is by the movie theater, and we're having tremendous problems because of the span it has to go to the tree. And just as you said, it just cannot. And the banners really need to have a metal pole on the top and a metal pole at the bottom. They're very costly, and folks are not bringing us banners like that. It becomes a problem. The banners on Springfield Avenue, um, the reason that, they, that we were told there's no banners coming on is because the Mayfest banners are going. First of all, there's two banners. There's two sections for the banners, one down by Avalon, Wawa, and one by um, Indiana Street Park a lot. The Indiana Street Park a lot, the pole there is, something's wrong with the pole. A car hit it or a bus hit it or a truck hit it. We were told at the last meeting that DPW was going to fix that. So until we can get that done, no banners can go up there. So we're down to one banner. Uh, the, the Maker banner was up there. That is going to be replaced by the Mayfest banner. Then when that is done, then the farmer's market will be up there to November. So we have no other space to put a banner on Springfield Avenue. So that's why we, were, we told people we're not be able to put banners up on either Maplewood Avenue or Springfield Avenue. So when we get that pole fixed on Springfield, we will then be able to go out and ask people if they want to put a banner there. It's much uh, more expensive to put a banner on Springfield Avenue because it's such, so much bigger. So that's where we are. Should we put out a public uh, service announcement in that regard? We certainly can. Yes. I think it's probably a good I idea. I think um, we need the clerk's office, which currently has the guidelines for over street banners, to circulate that. Um, the township committee and uh, those on the engineering public works committee, so we can continue this conversation and um, come up with parameters um, that need to be discussed at both Springfield Avenue Partnership and the Maplewood Village Alliance. Well, the partnership has nothing to do with the banners on Springfield Avenue. Oh, okay. No, they don't have anything to do with that. But comes they do have the they do have pole banners, don't they? Yeah, but they, um, they do, but they don't use them. And, and I have them for the farmers market, so that's. Yeah. I mean, if somebody wanted to go up there, yes, then we could talk to the to partnership about it. If some group wanted to put them up there, yes. But as far as the overhead banners, they don't have anything to say about it. Daffis? Uh, I have a report. Very quickly, a couple things. That's all I have, Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I wish uh, our dear clerk Liz Fritz in a very speedy recovery. We miss her and we need her back as soon as possible. Thank you, Roger, but uh, you're no substitute for Ms. Fritzen. Um, I also want to congratulate Ms. Viveros for becoming uh, our next business administrator. Uh, as she stated in her statement earlier this evening, she didn't get the job because she's already with us. Uh, it was a very competitive process. We had 28 candidates apply. Maplewood is hot. Uh, people want to work here. Um, and those 28 candidates uh, were whittled down to 16 with the highest technical merit. Ms. Viveros was one of them. And the 16 became six. I really salute and applaud my colleagues in thoroughly interviewing all six, and Ms. Rivera's really beat out some really great competition. So uh, we look forward to working with you. You're a joy to work with. Uh, you've already demonstrated your commitment to this community, uh, and uh, I really look forward to working with you. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to highlight the upcoming conversations on race that the Community Coalition is hosting next Wednesday evening, May 9th, from 7.30 to 9.30. Uh, this year's conversation is going to be about defining integration in the 21st century. I think it's a very timely topic. Uh, this is a free event. It's, it's a great place to go and get some information, to have a safe space to have some of these difficult discussions, especially as we um, address the issue of integrating our schools. Uh, 
so I really uh, encourage folks to go out if they're available to attend uh, next Wednesday evening. And that's all I have. Great, thank you. I do have four quick items. My office hours are next Tuesday, May 10th at 7 p.m. Uh, next month, uh, next month, next meeting, I hope to bring a resolution uh, moving forward with the murals at the train station. We've been working with the Mayport Arts uh, Council uh, and New Jersey Transit. We've been having discussions with them. And um, what we want to do is to have the program run through the township uh, as the Arts Council is our representative. So um, funds that are raised would go through the township in a segregated account and um, would be used to move forward with the mural project. And they will be uh, meeting with uh, Deb Hunnan of the Village Alliance just to explain what's going on there. All right. Uh, next up, the, um, the Office of Emergency Management has an emergency management coordinator. For years, that has been Mr. Manning because the Office of Emergency Management coordinator uh, has to be a resident of the town. Our administrator uh, that we're hiring is not a resident of the town. We have uh, neither neither the chiefs of the resident. So as the mayor, I'm uh, I have the appointing authority for a municipal emergency management coordinator. I'm appointing myself as the emergency management coordinator, with the deputy coordinators being the chiefs and you, uh, Ms. Viveris, so that nothing will actually change except that I have to go to a two-hour training. Um, and probably have to sign papers, but uh, otherwise it'll still be when we have our emergency management meetings, you'll still be running the meeting. Um, hopefully we won't have to have too many, but you as the administrator would still be running the meetings. But uh, that just meets that requirement. With, when Mr. Manning was here, we had no problem because he lived in town. And lastly, this Thursday afternoon, we will appear before court again on our affordable housing. Um, and the master wrote a letter to the judge saying that uh, Maplewood has done a truly outstanding job of preparing all but one of the documents that we need. And uh, she's reviewed all the documents and um, they're well prepared, comprehensive and compliant with COA and uh, affordable housing requirements. So we're, uh, we, we believe that the judge would give us a conditional, um, what is it called Mr. Desiderio, conditional? Uh, conditional, conditional judgment. judgment. Thank you. I just found it. A conditional judgment, and then we have some ordinances we have to pass, and then we'll get a final judgment. So we're well on our way to um, finalizing this settlement with uh, Fair Share Housing. That's terrific. And lastly, we need to get a motion to go into close. You need to read that, Mr. Desiderio. I do. Whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, public was in 1975, it's the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas this public body is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Committee of the Township Maplewood in the County of Essex, State of New Jersey, as follows. The public shall be excluded from the discussion of any action upon the hearing specified subject matter. The general nature of the subject matter to be discussed is personnel involving interviews. It is anticipated at this time that the above stated subject matter will be made public. Good motion. So moved. Second. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mr. McGee? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll be back here May 15th. Thank you.